Hey there, schooly scouts. I haven't said that in a really long time and it feels a little bit weird, but anyway, as you know, I am currently in the Boston area and Boston is not a city that's known for its great boondocking opportunities. Lucky for you, if you're headed this way, I have found some wicked awesome places to spend the night right near the city. I'm not talking about Walmart parking lots or Home Depot parking lots. These are much more interesting spots, so come along. The places I'm about to show you don't specifically embrace boondocking, but they don't not allow it either. That's because RV life, van life, bus life, none of that is on the radar here in Massachusetts. And the upside of that is that you don't really see communities developing the kind of specific anti-RV, anti-car dwelling rules that you see in some places. But the downside is that if you ask permission, you're probably gonna get a blank stare followed by a no because people are so unfamiliar. I would say that here it's easier to ask forgiveness than permission, so mostly I just don't ask. Part of your success at these spots is going to depend on what your rig looks like, you know, the size, the overall appearance. Basically what I'm saying is there are no guarantees on any of these, but I think, I think everybody's got a pretty good shot at most of these places. Don't overstay your welcome, don't misuse the opportunity, don't put out your slides and your folding chairs like I've seen people do, believe it or not, in Walmart parking lots. Just be a good nomad citizen, okay? Let's start with Everett, Massachusetts. About, I think, 20 years ago, in order to get permission to build the Gateway Center, which is a huge shopping complex, the builders committed to creating riverfront access. That's how Gateway Park was born. It's basically a green ribbon running along the Mystic River across from the shopping area. Then the Encore Casino came to town. Unlike a lot of casinos, the Encore has very little parking and none of it is free, so they were required to build 24-hour pedestrian access to the casino. That pedestrian access connects to Gateway Park. If you follow Mystic View Road to the end, there's a marsh with a small group of parking spaces tucked in right before you get to that pedestrian ramp, and this is where I nest overnight. Occasionally there's somebody putting a canoe in the water or fishing and every now and then somebody actually parks there for the casino which is what it's for but I don't think very many people even know this lot is here and I've never seen anyone there overnight besides me the little lot has room for maybe six vehicles the size of max not for larger vehicles I've seen class A's and fifth wheels parked at the Home Depot and the Target right across the way you could probably spend a night at Costco I'm guessing too not exactly the park but park adjacent You'll also find around sunset that there are people here because this park is one of the best places to watch the sunset. One of the things I really like here is the way the city and nature intersect. Right now there's baby geese and behind them you can see the MBTA trains passing by. And of course you can always take the walkway to the casino if gambling is your jam. Next up, Revere Beach. I've slept at Revere Beach many times. I love waking up to the ocean, the sand, the seagulls. That is when you can hear them over the airplanes because Revere is on the flight path for Logan Airport. Revere Beach is a reservation and that means it's under the authority not only of the Revere Police Department but also of the Stadies, which is what we call the state troopers here. This is the country's first public beach and as a public beach it gets a lot of use, even in the rain. Last time I slept there, there was supposed to be a big kite festival and it got rained out, but a lot of people still showed up. There used to be an amusement park here with a huge, very scary roller coaster. Now it's all high rise apartments along the beach, which is scary enough in its own right. I was actually surprised when I found out that it's legal to park at the beach overnight. There are some no parking areas, so make sure you check the signs, but here's what most of them say. Four hour parking between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. on weekdays only, not on weekends. No time limit after six, no time limit on weekends. And the only restriction really is that there's no parking between 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. on weekdays. I'm assuming because of rush hour traffic and there is no parking during a snow emergency, but I don't know why you would want to be anywhere near Boston during a snow emergency. So now we know that you can park at Revere Beach. The next question is, do you want to? On the plus side is this. 
I put the planes on the plus side too because I love planes and I don't mind the sound, but it might be on the other side of the ledger for you. Definitely on the minus side though. You'll never be level. The road tips pretty significantly toward the sidewalk. It will never be quiet and you will never be alone. This is a very busy place. I woke up the last time to these people sitting on the seawall. They were pretty surprised when Captain and I popped out the door. None of these things ever stop me from enjoying Revere Beach, um, but there is one thing that might. And I actually debated whether or not to leave Revere Beach on my list. In the news, the past couple of weeks, there have been a couple of shootings at Revere Beach, and that's not normal. So I decided to leave it on the list because I'm hoping it's something specific that's happening and it's gonna blow over. Um, but you might want to um, check the news and you know, use your own discretion, decide for yourself whether you want to stay here if you have other choices. And you do have other choices. In fact, we're going to head right up the coast to the next town over to Winthrop. Winthrop Town Boat Landing actually has an official 18 hour parking rule. You can stay there for 18 hours. And I think that's a great rule to adopt for anywhere you sleep because that gives you an overnight and part of the next day and you know, any longer and you're kind of at risk for overstaying your welcome. There are fees listed by the office and there's a box to pay the fees in, but those fees are for putting a boat in the water. They're not for parking. There's no fee for parking. Vehicles that are not hauling a boat are expected to park in the car spaces along the outside edges. There are big long spots here, you know, big enough definitely for class A's and fifth wheels. They are technically reserved for um, vehicles that are uh, hauling boat trailers. If I had a bigger vehicle, I think I would probably take a chance and park here, but I would only do it on a weeknight with a backup place in my head because it does get busier on the weekends. Can what's, I mean, what's the worst thing that can happen? They ask you to leave, right? There are picnic tables around and a little paved path that you can walk along the water. There's a green grassy area, but the highlight, the most wonderful thing about Winthrop Boat Ramp is the beautiful view out into the harbor. All the small craft in the foreground, the city in the background, and there's an amazing view of the airport. This spot is even closer than Revere Beach to the airport, so you can see the planes taxiing and taking off at a very steep angle when certain runways are in use. Yes, so that means the planes here are even louder than in Revere. And like I said, I love planes, but it's definitely something to consider if noise bothers you. Though if noise bothers you, you should probably not really be looking for a boondock in Boston because they're all going to be fairly loud. Um, maybe you want to go out into the suburbs to the state forests um, where you can pay to camp or, you know, maybe get a hotel room. I don't know. Next, we're going to have to travel inland a little bit, but not too far. It's still only about a 20 minute drive to Stoneham or Stoneham. I've never been able to figure out which way is the right way to pronounce that, but that's where you're going to find the Stone Zoo. It doesn't boast a skyline view or an ocean view or a, even a river view, but there is water, which I'm going to show you in a minute. The Stone Zoo has a huge parking lot that's been recently renovated. They've put roofs over most sections of the lot and there's no gate at night, but you have to navigate around some traffic cones to enter the lot. If you drive all the way to the far left corner of the lot, you come to an area that has, has no roof and not much lighting. It's pretty dark. Right now, there's sort of a chain link construction pen on that side of the lot, which I'm sure will be gone once the construction's over. But I usually park between the chain link fence and the wooden fence for the zoo, being careful not to block either gate. If you have a longer vehicle, you'd be better off going further left and parking across. There are a few spaces that abut the woods line. I would just park right across them. I don't think anyone's gonna give you a hard time here. You probably want to arrive after the zoo closes. They close at six most nights. Sometimes there are fundraisers that end later. So if you show up and things are still buzzing there, then I would wait and or park somewhere else for the night. Um, but generally speaking, show up a couple hours after sunset and you're good. There's a bit of traffic noise, but it's peaceful in the lot and it's very dark, dark enough that my bus is not really noticeable from the road. It's not what you can see at this location that wows me though, it's what you can hear. I try to get up before the zoo opens when I stay here and then Captain and I take a just a little walk over a little ways near the gates. The gates open at 9 but before 9 if you're standing there and I hope you can hear this
wish I had a better recording, but what you hear is a, is a symphony of animals, big cats, monkeys, birds, all calling for their breakfast. And it's pretty amazing. I have mixed feelings about zoos in general, but my mom loved this place. Wow. So I have made my peace with it after taking her here many times. And hearing the animals is really cool. After that, I walk over to the far side of the parking lot, past where I'm parked, and to this little trail that leads into the woods. The first time I parked here, I saw this sign that said no swimming, and that really baffled me because, yeah, of course, why would there be swimming in the zoo parking lot? But when you follow that trail, you come out on the shore of Spot Pond, which is a gorgeous place for a walk. In the winter, it's hard to get too far, but in the warmer months, you can follow that trail almost all the way around the pond. I think all the way around the pond if you want, though that's too far for me and Captain. So the trail hugs the outside wall of the zoo part of the way, and that's the part we walk. Then we go a little bit further from there. Okay, we're headed back to the ocean, but now we're gonna be on the other side of Boston, and this is my new favorite spot. This is the Hingham Town boat ramp. Yeah, it's another boat ramp, but it has a very different feel than the one in Winthrop. It's not well lit. In fact, it's really not lit at all at night. It's very dark, so you might miss the driveway the first time as you go by it. I usually go to the far side toward the park where you can see the green grass, and I park in the last space in the front row right next to the sand. So the nose of the bus is almost on the sand. It's a great place to wake up. The sand in front of you, technically that's not the swimming beach, but a lot of people do swim right there. There's a town bathing beach just up the ways a little bit, walking distance, but I wouldn't park at the town bathing beach because they have specific signs that say no RVs in their parking lot. I'd stick with the boat ramp. Just make sure there are some spaces that are marked with a great big T and those are reserved for trailers. The little park, it's a green area with lots of picnic tables and things and there's a gazebo. In fact, there were some getting married in that gazebo the last time I was there. This is the one place where I think you could get away with taking out your mat and your folding chairs. Just set them right there on the beach, take a swim and have a ball. So those are my favorite places to sleep in Boston. I have a rotation that I follow and I don't stick exactly to one place. You know, it's not like Tuesday nights always revere or something like that, but I don't sleep at any one of these more than once a week. In between, when I'm not at one of those places, I'm usually at one Home Depot or another because there's probably a dozen Home Depots in, in Boston at least. And they all are great. Nobody's ever given me any grief for parking at any one of them. I check out new places from time to time and it's always an adventure. So if you're coming to Boston, I hope you check out some of those spots. I hope you've gotten some value out of this and I hope you subscribe because that's the only polite thing to do. Also, watch this video. That's very polite too, so. Catch you next time.